Welcome to periodic phenomena. In this video, we're going to explore exactly what a periodic function is all about and the key characteristics about it. All right, so first off, what is a periodic relationship? A periodic relationship can be identified between two aspects of a context if, as the input values increase, the output values demonstrate a repeating pattern over successive equal length intervals. So x values always move left to right. x values always get bigger, like time. Time always ticks by. Time always gets bigger. So if we look at equal length intervals of x values or equal length intervals of time, and we see something that repeats, right? The output values repeat themselves in equal length intervals. That's known as a periodic relationship. So the graph of a periodic relationship can be constructed from the graph of a single cycle of the relationship repeated, right? So in this picture here, we see that, you know, you can identify the repeated section, right? So here we have our first, our beginning, this point right here, and then we're, here's where we have it end. And then after that, it just, well, repeats itself and it does it again. And then I know the screen's cut off, but we all know that X axis is continuing to go on. So it's going to do it again and again and again. So we see this section that's repeating itself. And, you know, here's the beginning, here's the end, or here's the beginning and here's the end. It just keeps repeating itself. The key thing, though, is that the X, the, the, you know, the section that repeats itself are equal length intervals. So I don't know, this graph's not really labeled, but let's just say that the length of this interval right here was 10, then the length of this interval right here would also be 10. So it's repeating itself every 10, you could say. Here's another picture of that just to, just to see it. I don't know why I had it here actually, but um, just to really see that you could see the repeating pattern. The X's continue to move on, but it's what's happening within a certain interval that just repeats itself. Now, the period length is the length of required for one cycle, right? So if we go back to the picture, the length of the period would be from any beginning point to any ending point, and it should be the same whether I say, no, no, this is the beginning point, and this is the ending point, or this is the beginning point, and if I were to allow this to come back down, this is the ending point. The period length is how long that one cycle is. So, um, you know, mathematically, we say the period of the function is the smallest positive value k such that f of x plus k equals f of x for all x in the domain. So let me explain this notation because this notation can be kind of a little bit, little bit odd here. But basically, what we say is, okay, if this is x, this is just, I'm going to call this x right here, right? And then I go, okay, let's move over k units. This would be x plus k. And the period length would be K. It would be from the beginning to the end. And then if I did another K, that would take me to here. That would be X plus K plus another K or X plus 2K. So K is simply the length of one full cycle, which we call a period, one full period from the beginning to the end. It's one full cycle, and that one full cycle just repeats itself. But the period is a length, right? So it's a it's a it's always a positive number, and you could look at any one cycle to find that period length. It doesn't matter where you find it. Once you find it, there is the length of your period. Now, the period could be estimated by investigating successive equal length output values and finding where the pattern begins to repeat. So that's like literally what I was just saying, right? You could look anywhere you want to find the length of the period. You just have to find where the pattern begins, where the pattern ends, or where the next pattern begins again. And that length from beginning to end of the pattern is your period length. Now, the number of times one full cycle occurs per unit of time is known as the frequency. A little bit of weird definition. Some kids have a hard time grappling exactly what frequency is at first. But I'll give you a quick formula. So the formula for frequency is simply 1 divided by your period. So once you identify the length of your period, 1 divided by that period length is the frequency. It's how, you know... The number of times one full cycle occurs per unit. So what's happening per one unit of time? And that's a little bit tricky to understand, but hopefully the next couple of examples I'm going to show you, it'll become a little bit easier um, to understand exactly what frequency is. All right, so let's look at a really nice example here of a periodic function. I hope you see the pattern that is repeating itself here. 
So we'd say, okay, here is um, one full cycle right there. There's one full cycle. And you see that that one full cycle repeats itself. And you might say, well, why'd you highlight that one? Why didn't you highlight one of these other ones? Well, because it doesn't matter which one I highlight as long as I'm looking at the beginning to the end. So what's the period length? Well, it's a distance of four. Negative six to negative two is a distance of four. Or negative two to positive two is a distance of four. It's that same cycle, right? So my period length here is is of course four. Now, I want you to notice something. I highlighted that section right there and I said, hey, there you go, there's my pattern. Um, this, I guess, um, upside down V. But, you know, I could have done something like this, right? I could have said, well, why don't we start it here and have this be the cycle? Okay, well, that's now, not an upside down V, that is a, a normal V. Maybe that's what's repeating. But again, notice what didn't change. The period length didn't change. It's still from four to eight. Period length is still the same. So it's interesting because you can actually find multiple patterns within the same pattern. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. And just to kind of throw something at you that we could do it even another way, we could say, all right, you know, let's look from negative nine right here and let's follow this pattern right here. So I'm going up, down, back up. Okay, now that's a different pattern, but guess what the period length is? It's still four. And then I could repeat that pattern from negative five, up all the way down, back up to negative one. That's still a distance of four. So it's kind of weird because you one person might see a certain pattern while somebody else might see a slightly different pattern, but it's all the pattern within the same function. And as long as you're all looking at the same beginning to the same end, only for that, whatever that is to repeat itself, whether it's an upside down V or a normal V or, um, you know, a, a ha, you know, this up and then down thing, right? I don't even know what you'd call that. But it doesn't matter, right? As long as you understand that, hey, here's where I'm starting. Here's where I'm ending. Why am I ending there? Because it's all going to repeat itself. That's still the period length of four. <clears throat> all right, now let's talk about what that frequency is real quick here. So let's look at, for example, this pattern I have highlighted right here, right? This one right here, this being one full period, this idea that we start um, up and then we come all the way down and then we come all the way back again. Okay, great. Awesome. Now, if I said, what's the frequency of that? Well, the frequency is simply one divided by the period length. The period length is four, so that'd be one fourth. So what does that mean? That means in one unit, in one unit, you will see one fourth of the pattern. So the whole pattern is this down, back up, this V, down, back up. But if I were to look at one unit, for example, four to five, that is one unit, right? That's one unit, four to five, one unit. In that one unit, I will see one fourth of the pattern. And that makes complete sense, right? The full pattern takes four. So in one section of that pattern, I should see a fourth of the cycle. Does that make sense? Okay. One last thing I want to leave you with here is I could go and actually erase all this and do the whole problem another way. As long as I see that full cycle, I just really want to emphasize that. I think I've already done that, but it's really to emphasize that you could say, Hey, no, the cycle is, you know, it's whatever's repeating itself. Right? So again, maybe I decide to start at a half. Okay, I know this would be kind of weird, but maybe I start right here at one half, and then I simply go down a little bit, all the way up, and then back down, and I just repeat that pattern, right? So if I go that here, we go one, two, three, four, I'd end right here. And then there's that pattern, right? So again, look at look what I did. Down, up, back down, and then, okay, why did I stop right here? Why did I make a stop right here? Because that's where it would end, and the new pattern, which is a repeat of the pattern I just made, would start up again. Down a little bit, up, down, stop there. So that's the idea, right? Hopefully that makes sense that we're looking at that one full period length. And whether you see the pattern as one thing versus somebody else, it's that distance of four. That's not going to change. All right, we'll make a, this one go a little bit faster here for this example. Okay, hopefully you see the pattern here, depending where you're looking, of course. But let's just say that I'm going to look at this start here, 
comes makes this full curve come all the way back up there it is there's one full period hopefully you see it again pause the video if you need to really take the time to see that that's the one that's the cycle that's repeating itself here it is again there it is so what is my period length well it starts at one and it ends at seven so that's a period length of six and what's my frequency my frequency would be one six that just means in one unit i would see one six of the pattern so from one to two that's one unit that section is one six of the pattern four to five that's one unit that section is one six of the pattern okay nice and easy not too bad all right now here is one where i would actually ask you to continue the pattern in all directions because that's another important thing of a periodic function is that it repeats itself in all directions so first of all, i'd say okay it looks like i'm going from negative five to two that's a period length of seven so now if i'm going to start right where i left off into a full another cycle i have to go from two up to seven is going to be taking me to nine right my period length is seven so if i'm going to do another period length i would end at nine so I'm going to end right back here and I'm going to go down to the same level, which is just a little bit less than negative six. And again, obviously I'm not the best drawer, so please don't yell at me. Yeah, yeah this is actually quite terrible, but you can, wow, that's really bad. I'm so sorry. Um, it's hard drawing with this utensil I'm using. But anyway, so you see, I'm just repeating the cycle. And if I'm going to go backwards, now I got to go backwards. So again, going backwards seven would take me to the 12. So this is where that cycle would need to end. So I'm going to go. Okay, that was really, really bad. Please do not judge my drawing. But you get the point. It's, it's, it, I'm actually a better drawer. Just the, the thing I'm using makes it not fun. Okay, but again, you're just repeating. So once you see what it is you're repeating, you just say, okay, that's my period length. I'm just going to keep repeating it and repeating it. All right, so additionally, periodic functions take on characteristics of other functions, such as intervals of increasing and decrease, different concavities and various rates of change, you know, everything we've already been talking about. However, with periodic functions, all characteristics found in one period of the function will be in every period of the function. So let's actually go back to this previous example real quick here, and I'm going to erase these terrible drawings that I had really really bad and you know if we were to ask questions about this right we'd say oh okay this function decreases and then it switches to increasing this function is entirely concave up which means that its rate of change is constantly increasing so anything i could say about this one full period length right could be said about the next period length and the next period length and the next period length because every characteristic that's true for this one period that we're looking at would be true for any other period that we could repeat and look at as well so just another, another additional thing is that we can continue to ask questions about concavity um, increasing decreasing zeros like hey look we got a zero right here at negative four uh, we got another zero right here at one so if we were to take this this period and repeat it we're gonna have two more zeros we're still gonna be concave up we're still gonna be increasing and then de or decreasing and then increasing sorry so any of those features that's true for one period is gonna be true for them all all right so now let's look at some cool examples just to see some you know some real world examples of where these periodic functions actually do occur so imagine you have a ball in your hand and you start a stopwatch and you toss it up and it comes back down in one second so over the course of one second the ball started it went up came back down in your hand right back to where it started so maybe your hand was three feet above the ground so that's why we started right here three feet above the ground at time zero then you toss the ball up in the air it went up exactly four feet to seven and then the ball because of gravity came back down in your hand that was once again three feet above the ground and that all happened in one second so my period length would be one full cycle of that ball going up and coming back down that happened at one second so now this is a real world problem so um, i'm modeling this real world prop so i actually have a unit on that period length and I say, okay, let's do it again. I would toss that ball up again. And in one second, so from one to two, it's going to repeat that pattern. The ball is going to go up to seven feet, come back down to the palm of my hand that's three feet above the ground. And I'm going to repeat it again. And I'm going to repeat it again. And I'm going to repeat it again. So imagine if I toss the ball five times, this is what I would see. 
Now, if I kept tossing it, guess what? The pattern would just keep repeating itself. So this is a great example of a periodic function in motion when we're tossing a ball up in the air. Now, what about the frequency? Well, <coughs> this is actually really... Boy, I'm having a hard time writing it F. This is actually really easy, right? Because frequency is 1 divided by period length. 1 divided by 1 is 1. This just means over one unit, so from 0 to 1, we see exactly one full cycle. So 1 to 2, that's another single unit. From 1 to 2, that's one unit, and we see a full cycle. So it's pretty nice when your period is 1 because your frequency is also 1. That means every one single unit, you will see the entire cycle occur. All right, another really cool um, place that we see these periodic curves is um, high tide and low tide, right? So maybe we have um, the time of day by hours. So we start at midnight, so that'd be a zero, and we go to all the way to 24 hours. That'd be all the way to the end of the day. And now please don't say, this isn't right. This isn't how low tide and high tide work. I, I just use this as a rough example. This might not be exactly a, a course of high tide and low tide. I'm not um, you know, an expert on that stuff, okay? So please don't yell at me for that. But we see here that at uh, midnight, we're at high tide. Maybe that means that the water is 10 feet up on the beach, right? And then as the day goes on, we see that at 6 a.m. we reach low tide. It's Or maybe that would be high tide. Maybe low, it all depends on how you measure it, I guess, right? So maybe this is low tide right here if the water's 10 feet out. And then here would be high tide where the water is 10 feet, 2 feet in. Oh, okay, whatever. Okay, you get my point here, right? The water's going in, the water's going out. And between that, from 0 to 6 hours, we see that the water is slowly coming closer in, depending on how you look at it. Okay. And then it goes back out. And another six hours later, we have ourselves at, at noon right here. Um, 12 o'clock noon. Sorry, right there. Um, so pretty cool, right? So we get this idea of the, the water starts at the high tide, and it goes all the way in, and then it goes all the way back out. And then guess what? It repeats itself, right? So over the full course of a 24-hour cycle, we see this happening, right? So you know, what, what's our period length here? That would be starting all the way at the top, coming all the way back down going all the way back up to the top. So it appears that the, the um, cycle length is not exactly 12 hours. And, and again, no one ever said that that was. Looks like it's actually maybe at 12 and a half hours. So my period length would be repeating this at 12.5 hours. So every 12.5 hours. So that's why when we see 24 hours, a full two days, it's not a full two cycles, right? It looks like a full two cycles happens at 25, so that makes complete sense as to why the period length is 12.5 hours. So again, it's just another great use of where we would see this periodic function, things that repeat themselves over time. So as time goes on, the waves goes out 10 feet into 2 feet, out to 10 feet into 2 feet, out to 10 feet into 2 feet. Just keeps repeating hour after hour after hour. Now, one more cool thing I just kind of want to point out here dealing with um, these periodic functions is what we call the midline, right? So if we have a max of 10 and a min of 2, well, then what's the midline going to be, right? Well, let's see here. Uh, the difference between 10 and 2 is 8, right? So what's the middle of 8? Well, that would be 4. So if we come up 4 from 2, we're at 6, and we go down 4 from 10, we're at 6. So 10 here would be what we call the midline. And we see that that midline is where we're kind of like, you know, we're starting up the two where we hit that midline, then we drop down, starting up at 10, excuse me, hit that midline, come back to two, hit that midline, come back up to 10. That midline would just be, you know, if we were to take that period length vertically and kind of look at it and just cut that in half. Um, so pretty cool there, right? So periodic functions are functions that repeat themselves. X continues to go on, whether that X represents time or just, just a random value and it's just getting bigger. The point is, is that X goes up, the pattern just re keeps repeating itself. And the length of one full period, excuse me, the length of one full cycle that is repeating itself is known as the period length. Pretty easy to identify that. You're just looking for the beginning and the end in the graph. And then we have the frequency, which is one divided by that period length. That simply tells you how much of the period happens per one unit. 
And again, that's like so simple, right? So here, if my period is 12.5, the frequency is one over 12.5. So in any one unit I look, let's say from 12 to th or two to three, right? That's one unit from two to three, that's one hour. We see one 12.5 of the unit. So we don't, we see a very, we just see a fraction of the cycle in that time, right? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, that's it. Hopefully, uh, periodic functions are pretty easy. Periodic phenomena are, are all around us. There's lots of things around us that cycle. Uh, we live in a very cyclic world. So um, pretty cool that we'll find a lot of real-world uses for periodic functions. All right, have fun.